Welcome to Small Practice Support Information Session Number 10. In this Law Society of Ireland recording, Julie Breen talks to Michelle Nolan about mental health supports for legal practice owners. Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to today's information session. Um, Justin Purcell is gone fishing and he'll be back here next week in the hot seat. Today I'm joined by Julie Breen who is Professional Wellbeing Coordinator with the Law Society and she's going to talk to us through today through um, the Professional Wellbeing Supports in the Law Society and also um, supports that are available to us outside of the society. So um, Julie, you might just give us a little bit of background in relation to the wellbeing um, hub and everything and why we actually the society got involved with that thanks michelle um, and thanks everybody for joining and participating in today's information session so um yeah just to answer that question around why there's a professional well-being project michelle um i think it's important to recognize that at a global level there's a significant amount of research has been carried out into mental health and well-being in particular um of lawyers mental health and well-being so, for example, in Australia, Scotland, the US, Canada, England and Wales, and there was a number of studies carried out into um, lawyer mental health. The findings were very worrying and the Law Society of Ireland became quite concerned that there was a similar trend taking place in Ireland. Um, so just to give you an idea of some of the, the global findings, um, in the, the American Bar Association, for example, found um, that out of 13,000 practicing lawyers, 20, between 21 and 36 percent of them qualified as problem drink, drinkers and 28 percent struggled with depression. In the junior lawyers division which is carried out in England and Wales, um, more than 38 percent of respondents stated that they had experienced a mental health problem in the last month. And then there was the, the more recently the 2018 International Bar Association um, study survey into bullying and sexual harassment and that found that approximately one in two female respondents and one in three male respondents had been bullied in connection with their employment. So that's just to give you an, a, a backdrop to why the Law Society decided to run its own survey and its own study and the study was commissioned, the Law Society of Ireland study was commissioned in 2018 and that was carried out into indicative levels of stress in the profession and perception of existing mental health supports in the profession. Um, very importantly for, so say, yes. for those of you joining in on the call today we would encourage you to ask myself or Julie any questions in relation to the Wellbeing Project and you can do it in the chat function either to all of the people here today or just to myself and Julie and we'll read it out for you. We won't name any names as I made the mistake last week. We would just ask your question for you. Okay so thank you Julie. Just go ahead there. No worries, yeah. So just actually just to say that the, 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 the findings of the study, the Law Society's study, which was carried out by um, independent consultants, was disappointing but not surprising. So, you know, um, we knew there was high levels of stress in the, in the profession and this was confirmed. 66% of respondents um, stated that stress neg negatively impacted their ability to do their work. Yeah. Very importantly for sole practitioners on this call or small businesses, um, stress levels were highest amongst sole practitioners. So that was that that, that clearly stood out in the, in the findings of this report. Stress levels were highest amongst members of the early um, in, in, in the early career stage and up to mid career stage. So up to 16 to 20 years of experience and women reported statistically higher levels of stress than men. Okay. So again, women. Um, so practitioners, just to kind of, they're, they're the, the, the highlights of that report. So, get I to, just ask, do you think yeah. in the fact that women are highlighted there, was that because more women tend to be more open in relation to their mental health and would be actively seek um, assistance in relation to it? Or is that the real picture that women are actually under more stress? Yeah, um, well, that was definitely... Yeah, thanks, Michelle. That was actually debated, you know, amongst the, 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 the team after we received these findings. Um, definitely, there was um, the, the the consultant who carried out, carried this out stated that this might be the case that women are more open to speaking openly about their mental health, mm -hmm. um, so this might have skewed the findings. However, there's also the factoring in that often women will take on the role of childcare on top of their career. Um, so, you know, the, both those things um, came into um, came into the, the consideration when writing the report. Um, 
but you know that's something that that is found across the board globally so it's yes. not something that's new yeah. to Ireland either. Yeah. Um, so about the project um, the, the main objective of the project is to contribute to improved workplace culture, resilience and well-being, and the emotional and psychological health of solicitors across the country. So the professional well-being project, that's its main goal. How we want to do that and how we are doing that is through practical supports, education, communication and guidance. And I'll talk through some of those that are existing already. Can um, I just ask, um, yeah. you're obviously the professional wellbeing coordinator in the Law Society, but you're not doing it on your own. Who, is this a top-down initiative? And can you just tell us who in, who in the society and indeed wider are involved? Is there a core group of, of people or do you have any support in relation to this? How has it worked? Really good question. Um, so this is not a top-down initiative. However, there is a genuine, and I really mean that, deep concern at higher levels within the Law Society around solicitors' mental health and well-being. Um, president Michael Quinlan set this project up, um, so past past president, um, because he was really passionate about this and uh, you know, knew anecdotally that this was a significant problem in the profession. And so it's brilliant because there, you know there's there's a real um, impetus behind this project at the moment and a genuine concern to make it have impact. Um, so it's the education department. So it's the law school are heavily involved in this, and um, we also have the representation of member services are heavily involved in this. And um, there's various so career 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 support, for example, small practice business support. Everybody's joining the the kind of the dots here, so that and yes. um, because we know that well being isn't just you know. Um, your emotional well-being it's also your financial well-being so it's 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 really joining the dots across all the, the, the pieces um, and yeah, the so, school psychological services actually take a huge part in this role as i know you mentioned education but i think it's worth noting that absolutely. the law school psychological services actually headed up by antoinette moriarty and her fabulous team over there yeah really do feed yeah. into this completely 100 percent. and the, there's a there's a project team with um, various different internets on that project team, but there's um, an, a project team with various different um, important people there because they care and because the law yes. society cares. Yeah, exactly. So just to say that, um, you know, I'm going to look at the hub now, I'm going to share my screen. But before I do look at the hub, because we'll, at, on the hub you have existing supports that are available to members, but we do also have future plans and the plans are ambitious and we're excited about them. And we also want to hear from solicitors on this call around our plans and what could be done, what, you know, ideas essentially. Um, but coming up, we have the Business of Wellbeing Summit, which we can talk about a little bit later, which is happening on the 30th of September. We have a pilot peer support program that's taking place um, starting in October as well. So that's peer support. So peer to peer support, um, emotional, um, and psychological support. Um, then we have the professional well-being charter, which is also coming up. We have, and um, will hopefully in 2021, develop mandatory CPD hours that um, attached to mental okay. health and well-being um, support. So these are all our plans. We have a mental health awareness week coming up in October as well. So lots of exciting plans. And now I'm going to share my screen so that you can, we can look at the hub. Um, there it is. This. Okay, can you see that now? Yes, we can, yeah. Great, okay. So this is the Professional Wellbeing Hub. Um, lots of information on here. So in each of these boxes, you just click on the tab and you'll find more information underneath each. So I'm gonna go into Unlock Wellbeing, um, which is a series of CPD um, webinars that was created by the, by the law school, like we just mentioned. Um, so from, number nine down to number 17 in this on this page we have a series of um talks around psychological health resilience so it goes from um you know how to breathe well to parenting in a pandemic to love lies and justice so yes. really interesting 30 minute short slots um, yes, I, I actually per, uh, participate in a lot of these actually listen to them some of them actually on just as in a podcast but they're actually really excellent. And the Wim Hof method about how to, how to breathe properly. I mean, I know it sounds breathing, but breathing yeah. is such an important part of everything. Yeah. But the parenting a pandemic, the box breathing method, another method, or breathing session in there. But yeah. there's just 30 minute chunks. They're CPD yeah. aligned and you come away feeling better for having done it. So I have to say, I encourage yeah. you to go into this series in, in here. Um, it's a wonderful one, actually, the Wellbeing yeah. and Nikolai series. 
And we talked about self-care before we went on this call, Michelle, and that's part of, you know, just taking 30 minutes out and giving yourself a moment and time to take in new information um, yes. around well-being and resilience is a part of the self-care um, piece. So um, that's the, the Legal Ed series, um, which is really brilliant advice to go in there. Across the board here, we have a number of, so if you click on these tabs here, you will be signposted to outside resources, which are highly recognized resources. So for example, Pieta House, depending on your issue, there's financial well-being in there. There's also um, you know, self-harm, suicidality, eating disorders. There's, there are um, outside um, resources signposted to in each of these um, boxes here. So it's worth going in there and also to help somebody else, for example, there's trainings um, around uh, mental health first aid, how to register for training in there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go into too much detail in there. So the EAP offer, this is another really interesting service available to SOAP practitioners um, and everybody, all of, the, all of the different members yeah. of the Law Society. I'm going to click on it here because it's, it's quite significant. It is a 47% reduction in price um, for an employee assistance program. So we negotiate an offer with um, Spectrum Life, Leia Healthcare, um, for members. And so for firms with up to 30 employees, um, it has been reduced from 750 euro to 400 euro per year, um, which is big, big difference. Mm -hmm. Um, and who's, who's taking up that EAP offer? Do, is it, does it tend to be larger or bigger firms? And is that um, the rationale behind why we went into Legal Mind? Yeah, so that's a really good question again. Um, so the EAP offer is there for firms that have a significant amount of employees who, for example, want their um, other professionals in their office that are not solicitors to benefit from an, an employee assistance program, mental health program. Legal Mind is only for solicitors so this is the difference here so we have an eap offer which is for all of the professionals within an, uh, within a firm legal mind is for solicitors only um so I that's why i have both in there in relation yeah. to the eap from uh, thrive there um we have a question in here to say whether or not is the 750 euro per firm or per individual in the firm per firm so per and firm. then there's there's a price per individual thereafter so it 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 has um dropped from 750 per person thereafter to 1 euro 11 per person thereafter so it's it's a, it's it's a big drop in price and so you pay this this amount per year and then you pay the um the, the per person within the organization and the, you know within that um tab you can contact thrive um, confidentially, separately, independently. It's none of this information goes to the Law Society, but you can contact Thrive through that tab there and ask them for more information. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to just click on Legal Mind now. You can find um, all of the information you need on Legal Mind here. Um, I'm going to stop share because I would like to kind of get a couple of points across, um, if that's okay, around Legal Mind. Um, so what is Legal Mind? Legal Mind is an independent, confidential, low-cost mental health service that is accessible to members and their dependents, so partner and children above the age of 16 who are still living at home. And it's available to solicitors and your de their dependents across Ireland at any time of the day or night. The service is provided by a high-quality outside provider, and they adhere to best practice clinical governance standards and procedures and codes of ethics. It's fully independent from the Law Society and 100% confidential. Mm -hmm. That's really important because I think there is a fear um, within the, 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 the sector yes. that this information is somehow going to be retrieved by the Law Society and used against them at a certain point. It is absolutely 100% not going to be. Um, and the portal is actually found under lawsociety.ie forward slash legal mind. And if you go into that, there's surprising ask things in the portal under wellbeing, but from nutrition to exercise to podcasts, it's not just having to sign up for, for a session as such. Am I no. correct? No, absolutely not. And if you want, I can actually share my screen and go through that with you. Yeah. Just briefly. Um, yeah. So here you have the, the um, legal mind portal. You, you register for this, very easy to register. And so, look up here under well-being content really interesting i think i think it's brilliant i've used it so nutrition here for example you can journal what you eat you, you also have a, can you see my screen here 
Yes. Yeah, brilliant. So you have all of these re recipes available to you. I found that <laughs> quite useful when trying to think about what to make for dinner um, and also really healthy um, recipes. So that's under nutrition. You can go in well-being. You have um, really good um, professionals speaking about um, uh, from yoga to um, actually one that I was looking at just recently was, well, there's the COVID um, is this one here your work work workplace well-being podcast really interesting um during covid to listen to that um this stay mobile stay flexible that's core strength and conditioning and it's a, it's done by a core strength and conditioning coach i can't do that much exercise at the moment so i've been doing this um really again like just pretty brilliant you so you have below it's videos that you wouldn't actually be expecting to, to to see on a legal mind portal as such well i no. was expecting to see that so that's actually good to know that you can have yeah. a little things around without being committing yourself if that's just dipping your toe in and seeing what yeah. is it's self-care you don't have to ring the number you don't have to call and speak to a counselor it's just self-care um so that's that's um legal mind um so I suppose I just might just give a bit of detail around how it works because that can sometimes put people off. So what, what would happen is um, you, a member can avail of 24 seven support. So there's a counselor, a psychotherapist at the other end of the, the, the line of the number um, that you will find on um, all of the kind of legal mind pages there and on the legal mind portal. So that person will talk through any personal or professional problems that you or your dependents might be facing. Um, and then if you if if you with them decide that you should avail of further supports they will refer you on to further supports so further supports might be a counselor a psychologist if it's a deeper mental health issue it might be a psychologist if it's um you know talk therapy it might be a psychotherapist um and within 48 hours of the initial call to the the, the helpline a um, member should be offered a date to speak with a mental health professional um, and that can be within a 30, 30 mile radius of your home and generally it's before five working days. At the moment those those sessions are taking over and um, taking place face to face, sorry, um, online and uh, over That's the phone. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Um, so just to be clear around what low cost support means, it means that you don't pay for, you never pay for the helpline. You can call the helpline as many times as you want. That means you can speak to a counsellor at any time you want um, for, for free. Um, but if you are referred on for deeper support, for example, if you want to meet the same psychotherapist 10, you know, 10 times in a row for a series of sessions, you don't pay for the first session because you really want to see if, you, if, if it's something for you. You don't pay for the phone call, you don't pay for the first session, and then after that you pay 30 euro per session. So that's, again, a big drop in price because I know that going to a therapist costs between 80 euro, 150, and actually psychologists can cost even more. So yeah, that's that's that that's that. Um, just around legal mind as well, um, and stop me, Michelle, if I'm talking too fast or if you want to ask me questions. Um, but there is so you have the self care, the the podcast, everything that we showed you on their their portal. But um, legal mind also has a critical incident specialist um, support. So this is for critical critical incidents that happen in the office. Um, so a partner of a firm or a principal on behalf of a firm can call legal mind and talk through what the critical incident, incident is, the effect it's having on staff, and then discuss a plan with that person around what they should do. So a critical incident could be a serious injury, a fatality, something happening in the workplace, violence happening in the workplace, or a natural disaster or something like that. Um, that can, that's actually, you know, can happen quite a lot actually, unfortunately. So that, that support is really important and something that you know, for example, if you had a small firm, two or three people and something big happens within that firm, you can call that number. Okay. And then, it, then there's also management support. And that's actually something that somebody contacted me about recently. At the moment, a lot of managers need support. There's also change happening in the office. The mental, mental health of um, solicitors is being affected um, because of the changes around COVID-19, childcare people you know maybe redundancies happening and um, and so managers are also need support in managing you know the situation yes, that yeah. they're in with their employees Every now more than ever actually or they're realizing it because their focus is literally off work as such and on to how to manage their people in the offices etc yeah I, everybody's having to come to this new new reality as opposed to not i can't call it a new normal because nothing normal about it but no new reality as such yeah yeah exactly so that's that, that's legal mind um 
Could you yeah, just I think on um, the summit, I mean, the, this is our first business of wellbeing summit that we're hosting in September mm -hmm. um, in collaboration with the Law Study for New Skillnet. And actually, it's a complimentary event. It was going to be on site, as, as with everything else, but now it's going to be streamed live and online. So maybe you could just talk us through that a little bit because we have a really exciting lineup of speakers, panelists, and special guests, Julie. Yeah, so I'm really excited about it. Um, I think it's really good because I think that we all think about. Um, well-being and mental health at, on a personal level and um, you know we think about it individually about how am I feeling today but and um, we don't really think about you know how well-being and mental health can have a really positive effect on your organization on the entity um, and on your your profit margins your um, your business your clients being more happy because you have happier staff like Google Twitter all of these big um, companies don't do it because they just think it's they're, they're fun. Yeah, they're, they're doing it because work, they, just because they see the, the, the rationale in it and it actually it does impact absolutely. your bottom line and actually as the busy practitioners are on here today saying do I have time for this? The reality yeah. is you don't have time not, you have to have, make time for this yeah. because this yeah. is so important. Yeah. yeah and it's not tangible so it's very difficult for people because it's not so as tangible as you know um, seeing a product sell um, it's 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 difficult to see how this improves your, your profit margin, but it does. And research has been done on this. So you have De, you know research carried out by Deloitte, um, where they they um, found that the UK uh, that mental ill health was costing the UK forty five billion per year, oh and the OECD carried out the same in Ireland and found that the that mental ill health is costing. Irish employers eight billion per year so they didn't, they didn't just pluck those figures out of the yes, air so it's exactly. really yeah really interesting and so basically to, to, to cut um, it short um, this business of well-being summit will be really kind of exploring all of that giving us the facts and the figures around you know how much are we losing out by not yes. investing in employee uh, well-being? And it's going to be like a panel discussion. I um, It's been chaired, it's been opened by our president, Michelle O'Boyle, but it'll be chaired by um, Antoinette Moriarty. And we've speakers in from Matheson and some UK firms. And we have Blind Boys, a special guest, I know. But people will be dipping in and dipping out during the day because it's it's a it's duration of five hours, but it'll only be on for three and a half hours because there'll be break times and that kind of thing into it. Yeah. yeah. So we really would encourage yeah. you to come along and. Um, yeah, we've thought about it a qu quite a lot. Like you know, it's it's fifteen minutes. It's very the, the presentations yeah. are very short. We've got Q and A afterwards. Then we have a panel discussion. It's a bit bit bigger. We've got really interesting um, individuals coming to that panel discussion. And then in the yes. afternoon, we have Blind Boy coming in, who's going to be interviewing a special guest around yes. vicarious trauma. I, um, I believe we've over two hundred registered so far for that. So um, you should pop along, and we're going to put the link out in that in our follow up email before the weekend. And in fact, if any of you want to contact Julie in relation to what she spoke about today, or indeed the current supports we have, or indeed ones that are coming down the tracks. Um, I put her email address into the um, follow-up email as well, so you can contact Julie that way as well. So I've just shared it there. Um, there yes. you go, Michelle. Yeah, so that, 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 that's, that's the Wellbeing Hub, and that's my email address, and I'd love to hear from anybody on yeah. this call. And actually, we have two friendly URLs. Um, it's lostsociety.ie forward slash Wellbeing Hub, and we also have lostsociety.ie forward slash Eagle Mind. But yeah. all of that will be included in the follow-up email that we're going to send out to you. So if anybody, ha not that you have any questions, but if you do, if you put them in the chat function there, or even after today, if you have questions, um, yes, Tom, it is, or yes, it is an information session, which is exactly what this was today, you're right. And we next week, we're going to be talking to Maeve Core on financial planning, tax planning, and pension planning. Again, more information based on that. So um, I hope you enjoyed today's session. And if you have any further queries, please do get in touch with either myself or Julia. We'd be delighted to, to assist you. And um, please do spread the words that these information sessions are on every Wednesday at 1 p.m. And they will hopefully help you and benefit you in your practice. Okay, so thank you all. And thank you to all the panelists for joining in today. And thank you very much, Julie, for coming along. Next week, Justin will be back in the hot seat. And I hope you will join him then. So that's it for me today. And thank you. <laughs>